Genesis 50, verse 24. That is the inspiration we have and direction we have from the Holy Spirit. And if you're just joining us for the very first time, you are a visitor, but our God will also visit you. Uh, Joseph was in Egypt for many, many decades, and he was dying. And his people had joined him in Egypt, but that wasn't their place. That wasn't their land. They were, like, they were, they were visitors. They were like immigrants or something like that. That, that wasn't their, 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 their original plan. So he said something by prophecy. And Joseph said to his brethren, I'm dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of joblessness. Bring you out of the barren situation. Bring you out of that depression. Bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And then verse 25. Then Joseph took an oath from children of Israel saying, God will surely visit you. And when you are going back to your place, eh, you should carry my bones. It was too sure that God is going to bring them out of that place into his destiny. So I see God bringing people out of shame into double honor. Out of the valley into the mountain top. Out of depression into everlasting joy. Maybe out of joblessness into becoming employer of labor. I said, my God will surely visit you. And then in Genesis 21, from verse 1, Genesis 21, from verse 1, I, I, I just love the way it's rendered. Genesis 21, verse 1, and the Lord visited Sarah. Somebody should put their name there right now. Say, and the Lord visited Yemi David in August. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. Then when visitation happens, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. So one of the first things I want to say as we run through this month is, in a time of visitation, uh, prophecies get fulfillment. It moves from your pages, from your notebooks, into physical manifestation and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did so there will be manifestations this month of many things that god told you privately and some things that god told us as a family there will be divine manifestations isaiah 48 28 to 30 will find manifestation isaiah 54 1 to 5 will find manifestation and the word will become flesh that means you will have a testimony this month of August. No, no, you will have many testimonies. Say louder, amen. When God visited Sarah, she had a testimony. So be expectant. There must be expectation. Your expectation has to be positive. Uh, you have to believe in God's faithfulness. That if God can visit Sarah... And then God said to my pastor that is visiting us in August. That means there will be manifestations in my life. My testimony is the next one. My story is the next story that will be shared in the church. And God is glorified in my life. I want us to be expectant. Some of us, it will begin this month and then mature through the remaining part of the year. For somebody else, some things had started. Then God will perfect it this month. Whichever way, there will be signs and evidence of visitation for everyone that cares to receive that. Even as a church, God is visiting this ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Now verse 2 says, verse 2, um, and, uh, verse 2, verse 2. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Verse 3 and Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Okay, somebody is giving birth to Isaac order of testimonies. Yes, then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Verse 5. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Verse 6. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh and all who hear will laugh 
with me. Wherever you are seated, if you want to stand up, if you want to sit down, we are going to say, God is making me to laugh in the month of August. You can put your name there. We did that in the early morning service. Put that scripture on the screen, please. Put on the side screens, please. God is making Yemi David to laugh. And all we hear will laugh with me. They will praise God with me. God is making Global Impact Ministries to celebrate. God has made me laugh. God is making you laugh. Making me laugh. And all we hear will celebrate with me. No more tears of sorrow. God is making me laugh. This will be your testimony. I see people sending in testimonies from this month and at the end they will say, ah, God has made me to laugh in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at the next verse. I, I really love that next verse. It says, it says, she also said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Who would have said she would get married at that age? Who would have said she can give birth to children? Who would have said she can have that kind of business? Who would have said your life will become a pleasant surprise? Yeah. Even to yourself, your life will be a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Who would have said? So you must think big. Who would have said to Abraham and Sarah, Ah, that Sarah would not children. It looks like the case was closed. It looks like the matter has ended. Who would have said? Who, who would have thought it? Who? So we did something in the morning service because Sarah first laughed when she was told. Then later she now did the real laughter. So we are going to laugh the first one. Aha. Uh -huh. So we laughed in the first service. It was great laughter so i don't know where you are let's start by smiling first you know pre, pre, like like pre preparation <laughs> are you smiling smile smile smiles look good on you okay now can you take the gear up and laugh ha 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 who would have thought that yami david will have that kind of breakthrough who would have thought a boy that grew up in a barrack setting would have a breakthrough like that? Who would have thought a boy as short as Yami David? <laughs> Who would have thought that Global Impact Ministries would be like? Who would have thought? Ha 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 ha! Who would have thought? <laughs> Sarah was in the tent. And the angel was telling Abraham that uh, your wife will conceive. She dropped the milk, the jar. <laughs> Who would have? How can that be? And God specializes in that. This season of visitation, you will become a pleasant surprise to yourself. A pleasant surprise to your community. A pleasant surprise to your family. By his visitation, it will turn your morning into laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God will surely visit you. This visitation will be evident to all. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every limitation and barriers that you had by this visitation, those limitations are broken. My God will visit you. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob will visit you visit your household visit your health that sickness is not unto death whatever the doctors have said that is contrary to his promise i'm not saying the doctors are lying but god is the great physician i declare that that sickness is not unto death instead of mourning over your life we will celebrate over your life Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. God Almighty, covenant keeping God, will surely visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God will surely visit you. So expect prophecies to have manifestations. Have joyful celebration if i'm visiting you as your pastor maybe today by 5 p.m 
you, you'll be excited. You'll be excited. The ah, pastor is coming to our house. Now, one thing I need to also mention when it comes to visitation is the fact that you cannot really predict how he will, is going to show up. So you need to have unboxed thinking. Don't box God. Don't think, oh, because he's visiting me, it will happen like this. It can happen like that. Yours is to be visited. For uh, Second Kings chapter 5 from verse 1 will help us understand this so that when he visits you, you won't miss it. Because he's already doing it in, the, in this church. Amen. Unboxed thinking. All the barriers, all the limitations you have in your mind, all this, you know, there's a way we think that God will always do a thing. And God cannot be predicted like that. No, you can't do that. Praise the Lord. Second Kings 5 from verse 1. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man. Look at the credential. It was already great career-wise. You know, in the nation, he had all kinds of uh, awards. But he was a leper. He was a leper. There's a question mark. I'm saying this because that question mark in your life, by God's visitation, it will be cancelled out in the name of Jesus Christ. He was a leper. Look at all, I mean, honorable, great. He, he, he's a victorious man, you know, in the military. He had the best results. But something about his health was not giving glory to God. Verse 2. Verse 2. And the Syrians had gone out on raids. That's his country. They went to raid. In fact, it was Israel. Part of the people they raided. <laughs> and brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel who waited on Naaman's wife, like a house girl, working with that general's wife. Verse 3. Then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. Who would have thought that the breakthrough will start from the housemaid. If you, if you, if you, and, you know, like today, you will shut this lady down. Like, Where are you? What do, what do you know about leprosy? Do you know the bacteria? Lepro, lepro, what's the bacteria? You know, what? biochemist? There's a bacteria name for leprosy, uh, the virus or something. It's very long, lepros, thumb, thumb, something, something like that. <laughs> Who would have thought? That's where it starts from. So, please, this visitation, uh, it might not be as dramatic, but it's going to happen. House girl, I just imagine her plating the, the, uh, the mistress's hair. I will say, ah, hmm, there's a prophet, there's a man of God, in, where you took me from, that if you praise from the master, who would have thought? So, visitation is not for those who are too arrogant. Because you, you can just, in fact, you can even start feeling bad that what is your business with my husband? What's your business with our family problem? So that, that will help us a lot. Verse, verse 4. And Naaman went in and told the king that they said there's somebody in that land that can help us. So the king um, wrote a letter to the king of that land that there's somebody in your place. I'm sending my top general. You guys will heal him. <laughs> when the other king had it, he was angry. Who? Me? <laughs> to heal? That you're looking for trouble. So Elisha had it, I think from verse 8, because of time. Verse 8. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, uh, that, he went, that he sent to the king saying, Why have you turned your clothes? Please let him come to me and he shall know that there is. A prophet in Israel. Verse 9. Then Naaman went, just, uh, I like when I'm studying the Bible, and I turn it into pictures, like a cinema, like a movie. 
you know, it's more intense that way and you understand it better. So imagine any of your generals in your country or a politician or somebody uh, coming to see the pastor, you know, and then he leaves his house with the, you know, the siren and the entourage. Then they used to have horses and chariots. So, so the, the man went with his horses and chariots and he got, you know, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. <laughs> Look at verse 10. And Elisha sent his spear. <clears throat> <Where the lapo? laughs> Go and tell him. Go and wash in Jordan. How many times? And your flesh shall be restored. Someone say restoration. restoration. When God visits, there will be restoration. And, and you shall be what? Clean. Then problem started. Verse 11. But Naaman became furious and went away. I've said this in this church many times. The many things that you prayed for, God answered. But you can be angry with your breakthrough. You're trusting God for marriage, God will visit you and then suddenly one brother in church that's an usher greets you after the service. Hello. Hello. Because you sized him up. Osha, Lassa, Lassa. You don't even know who he is. You just sized him up from your own thinking. It doesn't know. I prayed for a great man. And God showed me a vision that your husband shall be greater than Solomon. And then you looked at the guy. Hello. And then you moved away. And I said, hello, I just want to meet you. Yes, I'm in a hurry. Hmm. And that's the husband that's been disturbing God for, but attitude will not allow it. Or that's the man that will link her to her husband. That's a friend of that person that likes her. So, so he was angry. Just imagine that. He was angry. The main problem in his life, answer showed up and he was angry. Maybe you should even take note of your anger. The things you are angry about might be where your breakthrough must start from. Now why are you reacting like this? The way Abel, sorry, Cain was reacting to Abel. He was angry. And God said, calm down. You can learn from this thing. You can learn from this thing. He was furious and then went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself. One version says, I thought. Maybe you can help me with KJV. So you're thinking... That's an unboxed thinking. I, I said to myself, if you can get KJV, I mean, that should be faster. Yes, look at this. But Naaman was rough and went away and said, behold, I thought, you understand? I thought, this, this was, I know God will visit my health. So I thought the way God will visit it is when I come to church, Pastor Yemi will just call me. There is one man there. You are sitting in the third row to the second to the last. And your number is this, 80 777 you know, and then I will now come out and the pastor will now lay hands on me and as he's laying hands on me, leprosy will not be going out of me like this. They'll just say L-E-P-R-O-S or I just, <laughs> okay. You know, I thought, I thought he would surely come to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and then they come. That was his thought. This is boxed thinking. Hmm. Verse 12. In answer that giving God the way to heal him are not Sheraton swimming pool um, which other place is that Radisson blue swimming pool rivers of, are they not better than all the waters of Israel may I not wash in them go and wash in them and, and be clean so he turned and went away in a rage <laughs> ah in a rage Answer just showed up. You are reacting. The thing that should turn your the, the trajectory of your life, you're angry. You are reacting. Unboxed thinking will help us to experience God's visitation. Many of us, I mean, I shared the story. Some of us know the story of Canaan Land, uh, the headquarters of Winners Chapel. It's in a forest. A big forest. I was privileged to serve there uh, uh, during my industrial attachment as a part four student. When we were just starting, I was a storekeeper. 
you know, and, and just, you know, and I saw how a forest be, became a city. They have university in there. The largest auditorium presently is there. And that one has been built now as 100,000 cedar, you know. But something happened when the pastor at Bishop Oedipo was being taken there, when they were looking for a place. He said he was angry at the pastor that located the place. He said, he said in the car, everybody was shivering because he was, ah, where are you going? Have we not got in there? Because their church was in Yanopaja, in Lagos here. Yeah. And they kept going. He said he said to him in the car, are we looking for a farm? What is this? What is that? He was angry. So he said, we'll soon be there. You know how they were telling you, you'll soon be there. And then they passed Bell's University. Are we not yet there? We will soon be there. So they got there. He said, well, what is all this? It's too big. It's too far. It's too... It's not a farm. And as they held hands together, the Holy Spirit said to him, this is the place. So the anger left. Can you imagine if they had turned back without even praying? I don't want to hear anything. Nobody should talk to me. It is the wrong place. And then you'll be in a place. You'll now be saying, Lord, take us to a large place. But God had answered, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. That Many things we prayed about, God answered us. But we didn't recognize it, so we threw it away. And then we keep praying. Until you wait for another cycle. Let, let me say this. That cycle can be 10 years, can be 5 years, sometimes 2 years. And I think that's why God is visiting us now. For some people, this visitation is another cycle of something you threw away. So I'm saying this today to help you to be ready. Don't have your preconceived notion of how God must give you a job. That's the testimony we read today, right? That first testimony about the guy that there was a delay. You understand? And for somebody else, oh, he can't even leave Lagos and go back. And then somebody said to her or to him, while those people are delaying you, can you, what? Okay, in the first service. Oh, we didn't read it in this service. Okay. So somebody sent a testimony in where he came to Lagos uh, first week of July for a job. They did medicals and everything. Now, with, after medicals, what should it be? Appointment or letter of, uh, and of a letter. And he didn't hear anything for three weeks. But somebody now advised him, ah, maybe you should try another place while you are waiting. So he did the same thing. And that one just happened so fast. Pa, 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 and then got the job. By the time that offer now came for this new one, it was higher than what those people, those people now called after. And now gave off a letter. It was now lower than this new one. And I said, thank God he even followed that advice. That this new one is even better than that one. How do you see some of the delays you're experiencing? You could have just said, no, that's why I came to Lagos. I'm going back. And then just cut everything. This general was angry. And you can imagine when a general is angry. And they turn back. Scripture never even used the word angry. Wrath. Rage. What is wrong without this pastor? How can he just tell me to go and take it? What is it? You know, all those things. <laughs> so I want you to calm down this month of August. And allow God every day. Sometimes it's not in the noise. And God will sneak up on you and do a miracle. Oh, yes. He said, I thought he would come out and start shouting, Father, he lived. You know, which is not bad, but you can't tell God how we should do it. Look at verse 13. Verse 13. <laughs> this another. And his servants came near. Just imagine that. And, and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had what? Bid thee to do somewhat? Would you not have even done it? How much rather than when he said to the washer me clean? Can we have this verse in uh, NKJV or ERV? One version says, if he had asked you to do something complicated, which means some people even like, ah, if you are, there's somebody there, you have this illness, come out here. If God saves you some assault four times, you'll be healed. People like that. People like that. If you can get ERV, says, okay, great thing. Uh, any other version. So people, people have, and we all go through it, some preconceived, this is how my husband will come, or my wife, 
when I get to the office at the restaurant on Tuesday, a man will just come in in suit. Tie. He will just walk in. You know, we, we, we dream of those things. We just come in, you know, you just look at me. You just greet me. And they come and sit with me. That's what you are thinking. We have it. How the business breakthrough will come. Then go to, we just mistakenly dial my number. You know those kind of dreams. You just mistakenly, instead of dialing six, you will not dial seven. And then that's my number. You just call me, hello. So, and then, so, oh, and then you get a big job. <laughs> but his officers tried to reason with him and said, Sir, if the prophet had told you to do something, what? Wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he says simply, go and wash and be cared. <laughs> Thankfully, he obeyed. He passed that test. Because some people even shut down those servants. That didn't you see the way? <laughs> okay, next. Okay, okay. Let's, let's go to the verse 14. So Naaman now went and then he got healed. I said, Wow. So there are many things we had missed. So he went down, dipped how many times in Jordan according to the sin of the man of God and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child and he was clean. Ha! Huh. My joy is the question mark in our lives, God wants to resolve it. Because people have this mindset of ah, every other area is okay. It's just this one area. Let me just manage it. God has been good. No, God wants to perfect all that concerns you. He didn't say, ah, Neyman, look at your military career. Look at your health. Look at your finance. You have everything. Ah, 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 bah. Other people are suffering more than that. Endure this leprosy. No! God settled him. God that called me will settle you. This month of August, it will visit you. That area that been a point of shame, a big question mark. Uh, the grace and mercy of God will yank it out in Jesus' name. So, joyful expectations, unboxed thinking. I was to marry somebody else myself that was a United Kingdom citizen. I will not stop sharing the story. Uh, I like that. Well, I love that. I don't know. Like and love together. But one of the reasons why I held on to that relationship was because of UK citizenship. <laughs> because I grew up in a poor family. So it was like, this is the, my breakthrough. So one day the Holy Spirit said, that is not your wife. I, I heard it clearly. And it mentioned uh, Bimbo to me. She was a worship leader in the fellowship. <laughs> How do you leave United Kingdom citizenship for a worship leader in the fellowship? I didn't obey for one year. I was very angry with God. You want this poverty to continue in my generation? <laughs> because I couldn't see. So I eventually had to break. The break was not easy. It's like dying. But I obeyed, and I'm glad I obeyed. I might not have met you. I would have just gone to UK to start a church. Pastoring 45 and a half people. And then fighting, because uh, both of us were not compatible. I'm a choleric. She is also a choleric. We're already having those things much more. more. I can imagine the escalation. I'm just trying to see. God is faithful. Whatever he tells you to do is your visitation. Before we moved to this dome, I remember when God said we should go to Isaiah 54. And I refused to go because ah, I was waiting for a bigger revelation. Because the bills were so much. I was waiting for it. And you know, we have those things. I, I want God to just tell me all the pastors should fast for 47 days. And then there will be money. Or you should give me a scripture from Zephaniah, a, a, a book you don't read, you know, that makes it look like the matter is serious. How many of you have read Zephaniah in the last one year? 
Uh -huh. You don't even know that Zephaniah is in the Bible. He said, Isaiah 54. I didn't go there. I kept praying. Father, help us. Pandemic will not kill this church. <laughs> he said, I said Isaiah 54. So I went to Isaiah 54. Sing. <laughs> Sing, O barren. He said, I said, okay. Sing. Break forth into singing. So I don't want quiet praise. Loud praise. And then expand your place. You know. I said, so what should we do? He said, the answer is in that first word. Sing. So we started singing for 21 days. And the money showed up from the unexpected. One of our leaders in Lekki Church was in Abuja, was buying a property. He was about to pay. And God said, that money is not for you. That call pastor, use it for the project. He called me on a Saturday evening that God has been troubling me all week. This money I was supposed to pay for these plots of land in Abuja that God said is for the project in Lagos, in church. I said, ah. Are you sure? He said, yes. Pastor, will you be, in, uh, will you be around on Monday morning? <laughs> I was around. I have been around. Always around. <laughs> he came on Monday morning around 9 from the bank. With Forex together. I've never seen it together like that. Before I used to see sporadically, it came, and then the project started at that level. It has been on, and then on and on. So this visitation, uh, I don't know what God will say to you, but you will not miss it. Yeah. If there's somebody here, God has spoken to you about your own spouse, but you despise the person. So God is asking you. To go back. I don't know who you are. Through Lady Church, we have a great church uh, pastored by uh, Pastor God's Will. They have three services on Sunday. That property, we had located it a year before. And the landlord, so to say, said he doesn't want a church. So we left it. We searched for properties we didn't find. A year after, we were choked in a large masha through Lady Lagos. I said, Lord, give us land. Give us a place. He said, go back to that place and ask. I remember I said to God, they said they don't want, because in my own mind, will somebody change his mind about not wanting a church? I mean, that looks like it's, the, the, the family doesn't want a church. I said, you should go back. I called Pastor Yemisi. I said, Pastor Yemisi, this is coming back to my mind. Oh, call the man. And as he called them, oh, he said, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Um, you can, let's talk. If MFM has showed up, ah, wow. And then, and then, that's how we got the place. That was our place of breakthrough. We were doing five services there before we moved to this place. So maybe there's something God had already told you, an idea for business. A place to apply to. Or a step to take. That God is saying, can you apply again? The thing might have changed, isn't it? The manager or the person deciding might have been moved out. He said, those that seek the life of the child have died. Go back. I don't know how yours will be, but you will not miss it. Yeah. You will recognize your own turnaround. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let's bow our heads to pray. Thank you, Lord. Give him thanks for the month of August and, and say, Lord, I thank you. You are merciful. You are merciful, Lord. I thank you because you will surely visit me. Don't look around. Don't be distracted. Thank you for August. And you can say, Lord, help me to recognize my own visitation. It, it, it comes in various shades. It, it comes in various ways. But help me, Lord, to recognize my own visitation. I don't want to miss it. Help me to heal my blindness. Heal me. Keep me from pride that could hinder me from recognizing it. I, I, I see God visiting businesses. Career, 
different things god has showed up now but the question is will you even recognize him when he showed up when naaman was being instructed god already showed up but he was already angry and even left thank god he turned back god is not deaf there's a place i can hide from your love i can only survive through your love show me somewhere to go a place you don't know to cover my soul on the wings of a dawn i might fly to the ends of the earth beyond the sky i could go anywhere but you always be there wherever i go there's no place i can hide from your love i can only survive through your love show me somewhere to go a place you don't know to cover my soul <laughs> on the wings of a dawn i might fly to the ends of the earth beyond the sky i could go anywhere but you always be there wherever i go i'm surrounded you can't be discouraged say at the lord I have your back. I'm your strength. Lord, you're never sleeping. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not a sleep. He loves you. He's the father of mercies. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, Satan, your hold on that mind is broken. Set that man free from that stronghold of fear stronghold of depression stronghold of confusion is broken now in the name of jesus to the ends of beyond the sky i can go anywhere but you always be there wherever I go. Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. Before you were born, I ordained you for a purpose. And Satan cannot stop that purpose, not on my watch. Take courage and trust me and hold tight. I'm on your side. I'm on your side. Greater is he that is in you than the enemy, enemies in the world. Do not be afraid of the future. I am your future. Lord, your God is never sleeping. He's always there. Someone is encouraged today. Uh, if you're in this service this morning while others are praying in the Holy Spirit or worshiping God and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to pray with you. Or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. I, I, I need to pray with you. you. You are here by destiny. Maybe you came with a family for tight dedication but this world has penetrated you and the Holy Ghost is tingling your heart asking you to, to get back to God I want to pray for such people just raise your right hand where you are and I will pray with you just God bless you I can see your hands God bless you you want to surrender your life to Jesus or rededicate your life to him just just raise your hand I see those hands please if you're putting up your hands I love you to rise up on your feet I want to pray with you where you are God bless you I see those beautiful God bless you be bold enough rise up on your feet forget about those who are sitting beside in front of you rise up on your feet if you're putting on your hand up I want to pray with and for you uh, if you're joining them online you want to rededicate your life to Jesus uh, you know he's the head of this church I'm just a staff of Jesus he needs to be the Lord of your life 
and the savior of your soul. I see those beautiful uh, people standing up. I see you. I see them. Just if you are joining them, please rise up on your feet. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus or rededicate your life, just rise. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, if you're standing, um, you can just put one hand on your chest and begin to pray. We are waiting for others that want to dedicate their life to Jesus or surrender for the very first time. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you are standing, put one hand on your chest and say, Father, have mercy on me. Have mercy. I ask Jesus to come into my life. Come in today. Come in to stay. I renounce Satan, darkness, and sin. I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. From this moment, I'm rescued from sin, rescued from shame. I'm saved to serve the living God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me pray with you, Lord. We want to bless you for these amazing people all over the place and online all over the world. The hold of Satan and darkness is broken. They have a brand new beginning. They have a brand new life. From this moment, they are saved and the Holy Spirit begins a walk in them that cannot be stopped. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our officials will get a, a little pack or slip to you. Ensure when you get seated, uh, if you don't have a pen, uh, humbly ask them. Uh, officials, let's see also that they have a pen to use and fill those uh, forms well. We really need your data to follow up on you, to pray with you, and see you become the best you can be in Christ. I would love these great congregations to put their hand uh, together for them. Welcome to the family. If you're online, do the same. Uh, please put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for them. If you're online, ensure you also um, feel the